Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day day even on a friday night march the first eight o'clock is getting turned up in game cock land and especially with me captain will all right so i need for everyone everyone to subscribe to iheart radio subscribe to apple Podcasts, subscribe to spotify especially especially youtube because you're not rocking with the best and since you are now rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. We got a good one today, y'all. I said we got a good one today, y'all. Yep, that's that's the finger clap. That's what we got going on today. So, so where should we start? Where should we start? Um, I think we played a little game. I think we played a little game yesterday. Uh, uh, last night, 9 o'clock p.m. I think we played a little game in Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas. It was a little basketball game that went down. You know, um, Arkansas, if, if you watch the pregame show, if you watch the preview show uh, 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 that I did a couple days prior, you, you would have known that um, I predicted a uh, you know, uh, we were a heavy favorite. You know, we was a heavy favorite. Going into the game, we was a heavy favorite, right? But I also said one thing. I also said one thing that I believe that the Gamecocks would match Arkansas's three-point shooter, uh, three-point, three-pointers made. I, that's what I said. I said, I believe that we would match them. And we did. We matched them. We got eight three-pointers made. Now, I also told you that Arkansas loves shooting the three ball. They love shooting the three ball. Three here, three there. They are the equivalency of, 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 of NBA basketball. Now, right now, NBA basketball. That's what they do. It's three-pointers, layups, or get to the free throw line. That's what they do. So, going into this basketball game, first off, I knew they weren't a good three-point shooting team because they only shoot 31% from the three. And South Carolina defends the three at 27%. So I knew that ahead of time. I knew that ahead of time. So I knew that they were going to shoot a ton of threes, but you're going to leave so many rebounds for the Gamecocks, which is going to lead to transition points, and then going to turn into a blowout, and yada, yada, yada. And hence, this is where we were. Okay. I'm not saying that I'm Nostradamus. I'm not saying that I know everything about basketball. What I do know is I know what I'm talking about. So this is a shot right now to myself, Captain Will, for being right. Because I ain't been right in a while. I ain't been right in a while, but I've been, I was right last night. I was right last night, so I got to pat my own self on the back because I've been missing out. I've been missing some, but, but, but Arkansas... Shot 41 three-pointers. Arkansas shot 41 three-pointers. And they shot MA8 of them. My Marlboro County map tells me that 19.5% from the three-point line. Oh, South Carolina shot 8 for 19. 8 for 19 and hit 42%. Shout out to Captain Will for being right for the first time in a long time. So get your shot glasses up. Get your shot glasses up, celebrating the Gamecock victory. Get your shot glasses up, celebrating 28 straight wins for the Gamecocks, 15-0 in conference. This is South Carolina basketball. Love it. Every day of the week, we're going one more regular season game, y'all. One more regular season game. Before that, let's do the shot. If we're talking about, you know, sweet tea, uh, alcohol, uh, 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 red Kool-Aid, bright and early. Sunny the light, whatever's your flavor, y'all do it right now. Metamucil, insure, because we know we got some older folks watching the show right now. So give it whatever you need to do. Get your shot glass. Get a, get, yeah, get a good, good shot of insure. Get a sh shot of insure and do it right. Mm hmm. Mm. That's good. Mm. 
Let's go. Let's go. So, so, um, the game cops beat the beat the mess out of uh, Arkansas last night. The game cops beat the mess out of Arkansas last night. And uh, and you you watched the game. You know the game was at nine o'clock at night. You watched the game and you saw that there there hundred and ninety seven fans that they had in the game at the game watching. They saw a thorough beating given by the Gamecocks, given by Don Staley's uh, Lady Gamecocks on last night. I'm not sure, again, why the number one team in all across the land is playing a Thursday night game at 9 o'clock p.m. against a team like Arkansas. And and, 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 and this is what we got. This is what we got. Every I, I've lamented the fact that over the year, that I've been covering the game cost this year. Only been a year. Only been a year, be a year next month. That it ain't no metric that South Carolina needs to be playing on a channel or at a time where you got to look for it. It ain't no metric. There's no way that that should happen. But it happened last night, nine o'clock. That's why I didn't do a, a, a live post game show because the game to end about 11. And I know a lot of my folks got to either go to work. Or go get some grandkids, or or, or 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 you know, so it don't make sense, right? So that's why we're doing it tonight. But feel free, Arkansas, to take a shot that's inside the three point line. Feel free. It is basketball. You it, you you don't have to. It's not a three point con, three point shooting contest. It's, it's feel free. It is your it's your obligation to actually play, you know, all around basketball. I seen so many three pointers in this basketball last night, and it just was like, oh my God, y'all just shooting y'all way out of the game. Y'all shooting y'all way out of the game. And then, you know, you know, in the first quarter, I guess I guess they they you know they they put everything they had in that first quarter. They put everything they had in the first quarter because South Carolina had 26 points, they had 22 points. They because 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 they only scored 61 points in the whole game. Only scored 61 points in the whole game, so they scored 22 in the first first quarter, and, and two of them points was given to them from a tech before the game even started. So, so and in the second quarter, I guess it came back down to earth. You are what you are, right? You only scored nine points. Only scored nine points. And then South Carolina pulled back some in the third quarter. They scored 20 points, and in the fourth quarter, you know, we did we did again, and they only scored 10. So it was a it was an up and down roller coaster type ride for Arkansas. But I don't know what the coaching staff were thinking. You know what they were thinking? This is a coaching staff were thinking for Arkansas. We're like, we can't beat them. We ain't got, we ain't got a chance of being uh, South Carolina. We ain't got no, no chance at all being South Carolina. This ain't a video game. So, but we're gonna do what we can do. We're gonna. We know we ain't, we ain't a great, good three point shooting team. So we're just gonna go launch them up, see what happens, see what happens. That's all you can do, right? So that's what it is. They shot forty one three pointers. They only shot sixty three uh, shots in the game. Forty one of those shots were three pointers. Who do, who who? What basketball are we watching? What is this match that we saw last night? So you're going to miss all these shots. You miss 33, 33 shots from three-point line. South Carolina had 53 rebounds. I said that too. I said it too. Y'all going to miss all these shots and we're going to get all the rebounds. We had 53 rebounds. They had 21. 53 to 21? That's 32 more rebounds. South Carolina had 14 offensive rebounds. They had five. They had five. We had 39 defensive rebounds. Who get 39 defensive rebounds, South Carolina, because y'all missed so many damn shots? They had 20. What do we have? They had 16. They had 16 defensive rebounds. I don't know what game plan they had going on. If I was Arkansas coach, because we know you know you can't shoot the three. And South Carolina is top 10 in, in defending the three. If I was Arkansas, I would have slowed the game down. I would have did some four corners. I would have slowed the game down. I wouldn't even try that mess. But they tried to run. Who tries to run with Carolina? Why? Why do you try to run with South Carolina? And they have the same pace. But going into this basketball game, you know, South Carolina pace is 36. Arkansas pace is 36. Why would you do that? I don't know. I don't understand the logic of this game. I don't get it whatsoever. And, you know, assists, last game we had 30 assists. This game we only had 23. Like, we only had 23 assists. That's South Carolina. 
They only had nine assists in this basketball game. Nine. I, I was embarrassed watching the game plan. I was embarrassed watching them play because you are literally playing into the hands of Carolina. You're playing into the hands of Carolina. You are doing what we, we want you to do. So, so for future teams, future teams, because there's, there's a lot of teams out there who love shooting three. Uh, Arkansas was what, going into this game, which will probably be more now. Well, it will be more because going into this game, 45% of their shots were three pointers. We're going to play a team probably similar to that, going to shoot all these three pointers. Y'all, whoever that team is in the tournament, whoever shooting all these three pointers in the tournament, uh, you just choosing which way you want to lose. What, how you want to lose is up to you, and, and this is what's going to transpire against y'all. For future opponents in the NCAA tournament, you are not going to beat South Carolina by shooting a whole bit, bunch of three-pointers. One thing, one reason why, because we shoot three-pointers better than you. you know. So And we rebound better than you, and we play defense better than you. So that ain't going to work. You, you it, It's optional. It's optional. You can try it. But it ain't going to work. It, it just ain't going to work. And, and fast break. We're beating them on so many levels. Fast break points, 14 to 7. Points in the paint. Points in the paint. 56 points to 22 points in the paint. And it wasn't just, you know, Camila Cardoza or Ashlyn Watkins or, or uh, Sanaya Fagan or Chloe Kiss. It wasn't just that. It was some layups by Breezy Hall, Malaysia Full Wilder. I'm going to tell you this right here. Malaysia Full Wilder in the fourth quarter did whatever she wanted to do on the basketball court. It was like she was playing checkers and y'all just playing, I don't know what, tiddlywinks? I don't know what y'all was doing out there. I know y'all was tired. You just saw the look on their faces. This look so tired. Like, can we please just go to the dorms? Can we go to the calf before it closed? You know it closes at 11. Can we get the game over sooner? Why are they doing this to us? And just tired. Could they only, you know, the Talia Scott didn't play? Talia Scott don't play, didn't play. She, I think she's the best player, but she ain't played like last four or five games because of, you know, family issues or what have you. And so they only play like six or seven players. They only dress eight. Now, it's a different story from Carolina dress eight. It's a different story. It's a different, it's a different, a different argument. And then the commentators were saying this, oh, you know, Arkansas is a little short now. They only got dress eight. Well, I'll tell you this right here. If Carolina dress eight, there's still eight five-star recruits. It's still eight McDonald's Americans. It don't matter. You need to recruit better. You want to, don't get beat down. What you need to do, recruit better. Therefore, you have better results. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to tell you, but it was just ugly. It was a, it was one point we was up by 37 points. Oh, yeah, because we won by 37 points. Who who does that? Who does that? Carolina just beat the brakes off this Arkansas team. And if you want to, if you want to nitpick one little thing, one little thing, because we're going to have some folks going to be nitpicking this game that we won by 37 points against a team in SEC who was on the bubble to get into the tournament. One other thing. It was our free throw shooting. We were 10 for 17. Last game was 91%. I know good and well we weren't going to continue shooting on 91%. That was Malaysia full while it was 12 for 12 in the first, first last game and then proceeded to the first two, uh, three, the first two free throws. She missed the first two. I was like, okay, the streak is over. The streak is over. So we that's what we had, 58.8%. But we beat them in field goal percentage. We beat them in three-point percentage. We beat them in rebound. We beat them in assists. Steals. They did get three block shots. We only had one. Well, we don't get too many block shots because they're shooting eighty-seven thousand three pointers in the basketball game. We be they we we did have fourteen turnovers. They had eleven. Okay, okay. There we go. There we go. We beat them in fast break points. We beat them in points in the paint. We beat them in so many ways that is is, is incredible, incredible to look at. I just, it just it was crazy. It was crazy, and we and that, that's all coming out the other beat down. That's all off the beat down that we beat up on. You know, this, this, who was it, Kentucky? There, now we got Tennessee. We got Tennessee. We got to refocus. Got to re- recruit. Got to re- tighten the engines up, tighten the screws up. And, and I always do my um, players of the game. I always do my players of the game. And in and, and, and this case right here, this case right here, uh, you know, it's so many different girls that could be the player in the player of the game situation. So many different girls. But I'm going to go with Ashley Watkins. I'm going to Ashley Watkins, the player or co-player of the game. And Ashley Watkins, 
literally did whatever she wanted to do. She looked at them and said, y'all can't guard me. There's no one on that team that can guard me. I'm going to do whatever I want to do when I get the basketball because you cannot guard me. I'm faster than you. I can jump higher than you. I'm stronger than you. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. And I felt it, it, it really felt, I feel, it, Arkansas just felt helpless trying to guard Ashlyn Watkins. The little floater game. I'm driving to the basket to the layup and finish because I could jump higher than you and I'm faster than you. It's just so many different ways that she can score the basketball and defend because she's the best defender in the SEC. I dare to say that Ashlyn Watkins is the best defender in the country. That's, that's what I believe. That's what I see in my eyes. And, and, and if you got an Ashlyn Watkins who we know who is great defending the basketball is the anchor of us, of our team defensively, which is the number one team in the country defensively according to defensive rating. Defensive rating, field goal percentage, two-point percentage, so many different measures, top seven and, and three-point percentage. But I digress, okay? You, you have a player, Ashley Watkins, who, who, who when she, because uh, she's a sophomore. She's a sophomore, okay? So then you know, a junior or senior who, who we see. She's still learning the basketball game. She's still learning the college basketball game. And last night was a glimpse. Just a glimpse of how dominant this girl could be. She had 21 easy points. And I ain't talking about, because we hear a whole lot about, oh, such and such, 25 points, 27 points, 28 points. But that certain person, 25, 27, 28 points, scored, shot the ball 27, 28, 29 times. Ashley Watkins shot the ball 21 times. Scratch that. Ashley Watkins shot the ball 12 times, made nine of them, had 21 points. She was three for six from the free throw line and had 11 rebounds. She only played 21 minutes. The girl got one point per minute last night. Can you say, can you say how special that is on so many levels? Why not, you know, lapsing on defense like so many so-called great players in this country do? I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of hearing about it. We have all these great players, but the defensive rating is 93. The defensive rating is 89. The defensive rating is 97. But they're great, right? They are so talented offensively. But that's not the, the, that's not the narrative. They're great offensively. That doesn't make you a great player. A great player means that you are really good offensively and you're really good defensively. That player is Ashlyn Watkins. Ashlyn Watkins was dominant last night. Now, this is the first game that she didn't have a block. But you know the reason she didn't have a block last night? The reason she didn't have a block last night because nobody was shooting on her in the paint. Everybody's shooting three borders. So there's no opportunities. Ain't gonna be no games when we got one block. If we're in a game, we only got one block in the, in, 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 in the whole entire game. And then one block that Camila Cardoza had, it was a block because the girl was shooting a three border. They had that six foot four player who, 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 who if, daughter, she shot 12 three pointers. 12 three pointers. Why? She don't hit three of them. 12 three-pointers. Who do that? So we can't get no block shot because you're shooting 12 three-pointers. Go down in that post and do some work. Ashley Watkins put on a clinic of how good she could be. How good she could be. Ladies and gentlemen, you talking about who's going to be our, our starting center next year? Ain't no conversation. It ain't no conversation who's going to be the starting center for South Carolina next year. Ain't no conversation. Ashley Watkins is going to be the starting center for the so University of South Carolina game cards next year. Six foot three. Strong as ox, strong like bull, country strong, everything, you, every narrative you want to say about Ashley Watkins, it is it. She jumps higher than you, she's stronger than you, and she is faster than any center power forward in the country. That's Ashley Watkins. She's going to be the starter next year. If things going to look different next year, Ashley Watkins is going to be the starter at center. You're going to have a, a, a Chloe Kitts or a Sanaya Fagan starting to power forward. It's just going to look different. It's going to look different. And it's so special to see because I love every second of it. Every single second of it. It's just going to look different. 21 points, 11 rebounds, one steal. The girl was dominant, dominant special. And the second one I want to talk about on last night is none other than our own, none other than our own Malaysia Fool Wiley. Malaysia Fool Wiley. Malaysia Fool Wiley from Columbia, South Carolina, Kenan High School. Uh, uh, you know, 
It ain't enough, it ain't enough words I can talk about Malaysia for a while. It ain't enough words I can say about this girl. They have the toughest task with Malaysia full while coming off the bench against a tired team. You want to put in work? Try going Malaysia full while in the open court. Try, try, you want to do cardio? Try going Malaysia full while in the open court. Because she's going to put you on skates every single time. And these non athletic teams. You 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 have no chance. You better play zone. You better have because you ain't any no chance. Because Don is doing this right here. Don is saying spread him out. She's doing it like old Michael Jordan, 85, 86, 1988. Okay? That's like we're gonna spread you out. We're gonna get Malaysia full out of the ball. And it, it's your move. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Because ain't nobody in this country can guard Malaysia full while one on one. It ain't nobody. It ain't nobody. Now, Malaysia for a while, it might not go in, but she's going to break off somebody. She's going to break a knee. She's going to break off her ankle. Somebody breaking a toenail. Toe, toenail. Somebody's go, something going to happen when Malaysia for a while is in the open court and it's one-on-one -on -one, and you just hope for the best. And I'm just saying, we're hearing a whole lot of talk about all these great freshmen across this country. All these great freshmen, they doing this and they doing that. Yeah, they are. Juju is doing her thing. Hannah Hidalgo doing her thing. Uh, Madison Booker doing her thing. All these great freshmen are doing work, right? But ain't no, Michaela Williams doing her thing at LSU. Ain't no freshman walking God's green earth right now that I would take over Malaysia for a while. Only thing different, well, Malaysia for a while, like, you, and you got to say it like the way I'm saying it. You got to say it like I'm saying it, Malaysia. Malaysia for a while. That's how we, got, that's how we talk in the country. Malaysia for a while. Because ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. Only difference is you got Hannah Hidalgo playing 35, 36, 37 minutes. You got old Juju playing 35, 36, 7 minutes. You got old uh, Michaela, Michaela Williams from LSU doing the same thing. Malaysia, you know what Malaysia for a while is averaging? So last night she had 19 point, 19 minutes, 19 minutes. You know how many minutes she's had? She ain't even averaging 20 minutes a game. She had about 19 minutes a game, 18 and a half, 19 minutes a game. So she ain't getting those opportunities like that, like these other players are doing. And you know what Juju and and and, and uh, Hannah Hidalgo got that that we ain't got? They the best player on the team. They the best player on their team. I cannot wait. I hope a uh, Southern Cal is in our bracket. I hope Southern Cal is in our bracket. I hope, uh, uh, I already talked about Iowa. I ain't talking about Iowa tonight. Well, I probably will. I probably will. But I hope these star, star freshmen who ain't got much else. Because last time we played uh, Notre Dame, Hannah Hidalgo did her thing. She had a bunch of turnovers too. But she did her thing. We still won by 30 plus. You know what I'm saying? So, so, Malaysia for a while, I had 17 points, 19 minutes. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. And she was seven for 13 from the field. Seven for 13 from the field. Now she shot too many three pointers. She got shot too many three pointers. I don't want Malaysia for a while to shoot no six three pointers. I want to shoot about two or three, two or three. And then the rest of the time, go to that rack. You go to that rack because they can't do nothing with you. They can't do nothing with you. That's what you do. Malaysia, I know you hear me. I know you hear me. You go to that rack and they can't guard you, girl. You play just like you in the country. Everywhere you go, I don't care if it's Arkansas, I don't care if it's Tennessee, I don't care if it's Poland, I don't care if it's South Korea, I don't care where it is. You play like you played in the country. You know how we do in the country. We let you know. We let you know what it is. And that's what you got to do. Don't be let, because when you're shooting out on three-pointers, you're settling. You letting them, you letting them get off the hook. You let them get off the hook because they want you to shoot a three-pointer. Mm -mm. Don't let them, don't let them get you, let, get you off the hook. Uh-uh, don't let them do it. You take it to them. You draw fouls, you draw fouls, and then you get on the other end and you defend because that's the difference also between a Malaysia full while and Hannah Hidalgo. Hannah Hidalgo gets a whole lot of steals because she cheats a lot. She cheats a lot. But Hannah Hidalgo, uh, Juju, Madison Buck, ain't none of these players. Michaela especially ain't as good at defensively as a Malaysia full while. None of them. None of them. She does it offensively and defensively. The girl has 17 points, four rebounds, two assists. The girl has four steals. Four steals. That's what she does. That's what she does. In 19 minutes, that second half, especially that fourth quarter, about four, four, maybe five minutes left in the game. Uh-uh. Arkansas was tapping out. I don't know how many times she stole the ball from Arkansas in those last few possessions. 
She's like she playing. She playing by herself because Arkansas didn't want no parts of the game. I told you they were trying to they were trying to run it out. They run the clock out, trying to run the clock out so they can go get some chow before it closed. That's how we used to do back in the army days. We try to get to get to the get to the chow hall before it closed. You know, and we might get a couple scraps or whatever, but we're gonna get there before it closed. That's how we used to do. You know, that's what Malaysia fool wallet. The girl was so special. And then, you know what? I got to talk about one more before we go into this question. We got a whole lot of questions, got a whole lot of comments and all that good stuff. I got to talk about Otessa Johnson. I told y'all, I told y'all, I ain't talking about y'all as my Gamecock family. I'm talking about everybody else who ain't in my Gamecock family, everybody else who's chiming in or from other teams and just want to chop it up on all these different things. I told y'all, we got three Splash Sisters. And I wanted to catch on. We talk about the Splash Sisters because every time we talk about South Carolina, we talk about the Splash Sisters. And the Splash Sisters, Splash Sisters are Tahina Power Power. Tina Power Power only took five shots. Only took five shots. Of those five shots, four of those are three-pointers. Well, you know what happened? She hit two of them. That's 50% last time I checked. And that's a splash, sister. And then we talk about Breezy Hall. Breezy Hall only took five shots herself. Only took five shots. She only had four points. That's it. Breezy didn't do much last night, but she played some defense. She played some defense because Tessa Johnson was doing some things that we've been waiting on Tessa Johnson to do. Tessa Johnson did some things that I saw her do in high school at Minnesota, when she was a McDonald's All-America, Gatorade Player of the Year in Minnesota. This is what I've been waiting on. The other Splash sister. The girl had 20 minutes yesterday. 20 minutes yesterday. She had 12 points. 12 points. Uh, five rebounds. One assist. You know, but what's special for, for, Tess, for Tessa Johnson? You no, know what's special for her? For Tessa Johnson? Tessa Johnson was four for five from the three-point line. Four for five from the three-point line. So the Splash sisters themselves was in, let me do that math. That's six. Six out of six. Six out of 11. The Splash Sisters was six for 11 last night in three-point baskets. Because I tell you before, it ain't how many. It ain't the volume no matter. The volume no matter. It's what you do when you get the rock and you shoot it. Because you're going to have a team like an Arkansas who shot seven million three-pointers but only hit eight. Or you have a team like South Carolina who shot 19 and hit eight. It sounds much better. It sounds so much better. Tessa Johnson had her best offensive uh, production last night. The Rainbow Three is pretty. It's sensational. It is something to watch. Keep your eye on the Splash Sisters because this is the way it goes. All of them ain't going to be hot in a basketball game. It's, it, the way we pass the ball, the way we, you know, the pretty basketball, pretty basketball. You know, we, we ain't going to, everybody not going to get hot. Everybody not going to take a whole bunch of shots. The most shots last night was took by Full Wild and by Ashlyn Watkins. That was only 12 and 13 shots. You ain't going to see a player shoot no 20 times in South Carolina. That ain't going to happen. Unless we in double, triple overtime. You ain't going to see that. Everybody shoots the ball. Cardoza had eight shots. Breezy had five. Raven had five. Pow Pow had five. Chloe Kiss had uh, six uh, uh, field goals. In 10 points, 17 minutes. We'll talk about Chloe later. And then Fagan had four, three. Everybody's going everybody gonna to get their chance to shoot the ball. That's what Carolina's so special about. We're not a, 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 a me, me, me. We ain't a me, me, me. We're a we, we, we. That's what we do. That is Carolina basketball. I am hyped tonight. I am hyped tonight. Let's go through some of these, because I missed y'all yesterday. I missed y'all. I really did. I missed y'all. So let's go through some of these questions and comments. I want to say what up to Elizabeth Anderson, Uniquely Chick, Day, Day T, Jonathan McQueen. Happy Friday. We are on that pure Hennessy. John McQueen say we on that pure Hennessy <laughs> tonight. Cheers to the Gamecocks for finishing the year off with that championship. I mean, come on. It, it ain't enough said about, you know, uh, uh, this championship and what Don Staley has done at Carolina. Because I remember when it was about, they was almost giving away uh, tickets. To Carolina, I remember. I remember. I was going to Francis Marion in that time frame. I remember. I remember what was going down. But ain't no more. We got to understand that everything changed. The calculus changed. The matrix has been opened up. Everything is so special. Ordell Kaba, I love your podcast. I am 71 and follow the Lady Game Cox religiously. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. As keep, I hope you got your shot of whatever shot you're doing. Erdell Cabba, appreciate you so much. Why didn't Chloe Kiss start the game? She was upset she didn't start early in the season. Don had her start. Plus, she only played 17 minutes. Hey, I thank you for the comment. I thank you for the comment. So what I gathered, what I gathered was it was, um, how can I say? That was a, a little situation. 
let's say that we had it was a little situation watching them start the basketball game. A little situation watching them start the basketball game. Uh, Don says she'll be starting on Sunday, back to what she does, doing what she does. But as you saw, Chloe didn't pay, play the first quarter. She came in first thing in the second quarter. Read into that as you will. Read into that as you will. Um, she'll be starting on Sunday. She'll be starting on Sunday. Yeah, she only played 17 minutes. Well, I mean, because real talk, I mean, Chloe only averages. And before the year, is around 18, 19 minutes. She's been playing a little bit more in conference play. You know, over the, prior to this game today, prior to this game today, because I wish it would. Prior to the game last night, the previous four games, Chloe was averaging 22 and a half minutes per basketball game. 22 and a half minutes per basketball game. Last night, she played 17. Okay. Could be because she ain't played none in the first quarter. A few minutes was down, you know, but she'll be back to a regular uh, output on Friday. She'll be back on a regular output put on Friday. But I tell you this right here, when she came into the basketball game, she put in work. She let them know. And Chloe playing against the uh, second squad is something special because she still finished with 10 points, five rebounds, two, two, st- uh, two assists and one steal. Shot four for four, four for six from the field and two for two from the free throw line. You know, so she still put in work, and I love me some Chloe Kids. The girl got offensive moves and top offensive moves. We talk about Sonia Fagan on the offensive moves and top offensive moves. Yo, Chloe, Chloe got some moves too. Chloe got some moves too. And you know, prior to this game, her uh defensive rating was about 76.5, which is really, really good. Her offense, here's put this in context. Cause I hear the whole lot of stuff about Angel Reese being a great defender, great defender. I'm gonna tell you this right here. Chloe Kids. And Angel Reese defensive rating are about the same. About the same. Didn't know y'all didn't know that, did you? Didn't know that. Nope. They about the same. Pretty much the same defensive rating. Chloe Kitts defensive rating is better than Lisa Morrow. Yeah, sure is. Chloe's a Chloe's a worker, and she's gonna she's gonna find a way to get that ball in that basket. Elbow. She did a, a couple of nice elbows. Sure did. A little shoulder. She didn't do the half flip because she had the, you know, you know, it was pinned up. Chuck Bailey, what's up, my guy? What's up? Let's go cap. Chloe's a beast. You show right. You, you, you she is. She is. She's a beast. By every, every metric that you can say, she's a beast. You know, and I and I, I just want to, we are so blessed with the talent in this basketball team. We are so blessed with the talent in this basketball team. We go into pretty much every basketball game. Not, let me scratch that. Reverse it. We go into every basketball team, every basketball game, with more talent than any other opponent on other team. What we don't have going into this season was experience. Now, these girls have been developing experience throughout this season. And I told you multiple times, multiple times, that on paper, this team that we have right now, 28 and 0, 15-0 in the conference is the best basketball team South Carolina has ever had. Now, they got to win the chip. They got to win the chip this year. But in terms of talent, we ain't never had no basketball team with nine McDonald's All-Americans. We never had that. Go through it. Go through the tape. Go through all the teams. 2017 won the chip. 2022 won the chip. We ain't never had that. No, we ain't never had that. We do now. But it's a young basketball team. It's a young basketball team. So they're working their way through it. They're working their way through it. Michelle Malone, Ashton Watkins just keeps getting better and better. And Michelle and Chuck Bailey, appreciate y'all for being a member. Um, You know, it's a great time to talk about membership. So if you want to be a member of my team, you want to be a member of Captain Will's Brigade, Captain Will's uh, Company, Captain Will's Army, Captain Will's Army, and be a part of the, be a lieutenant in my family, go to my YouTube page, click on... You, uh, I think it said click on membership or click on join and follow the instructions. If you a gold member, you get this dope T-shirt. Here's the T-shirt. It says basketball. It got the girl on there right there. And then at the bottom of it, it got game cost talk with Captain Will. It's really dope. Really dope. Really fly. So you get a, you get a, a free T-shirt for becoming a gold member. Just uh, become a member. Email me at Caps Corner. C-A-P-S at... No, caps, C-A-P-S, corner, at yahoo.com. That's it. (laughs) That's what it is. And also, if you want to buy one of these shirts, real cool, I'll be selling them. I can sell them online. I can do all this stuff. I put it on my page. You just click on it and go for it or just email me, DM DM me, all those cool things. I'll tell you the cost. I think I'm selling them for about, I think I'm selling them for 23 bucks, 23 bucks, because it costs to make. 
and it's a, I mean, it's a dope design. It ain't that cheap material either. And it come in a fly box. So hit me up. And also right now we 230, what? 231 people in right now. Subscribe on the regular. I know it's up. So this is what I, this is my plea. This is my plea to the older folks who's watching. Cause I'm an older cat too. I'm an older cat too. Right. So this is for my middle-aged folks. I know y'all be watching me on YouTube to see my pretty face, right? I know y'all be doing that. But also, you know, go to Apple Podcasts. I think that's the easiest way. Just go to Apple Podcasts, search Gamecocks Talk with me, come up, press the follow button. Do that for me. Everybody who's watching me right now, who's going to be watching me in the future, you know, do that. And you get all the podcasts. You can watch them at your leisure. You can watch them where you're cooking. You can watch them while you're driving. You know, you're on a you're on a um a commute to work or to see the family or whatever. You can just hear hear me bloviating and talking mess about you know other teams trying to beat the Gamecocks. You know, and if you don't know how to do it, ask some of these young heads. My three year old can do pretty much anything with a phone and a computer. Now it is a crazy world we live in right now. It's a crazy world where three year olds can do stuff like that. Robin minute coach De Don Staley says she was going to start Watkins, but it would have messed up being the six man of the war, uh, six woman of the year award. You're right. That's what she said. She did. So it's like a, it's like a weird math, like a weird math that that's formulated. You can't play so many games or we can't start so many games or to mess up the algorithm for being, you know, the sixth woman of the year. Cause that award is locked. It ain't no, that award has real talk. That award been locked since January. It's been on lock. And that is her, that's her award. So we ain't starting no Ashley Watkins. No, cause she's getting that award. And that ain't the only award she getting. Mm -mm. Ashley, Washington, Ash Ashley Watkins should get defensive player of the year for the SEC. I'm going to lose my mind on air if somebody else gets it. I'm going to lose it. And I'm going to be doing my own uh, player awards on Monday in the SEC because I know they're going to jack up some stuff. They're going to jack up some stuff. And, and here's the thing. National media, all these different folks who voting on these awards, mess it up if you want to. Mess it up if you want to. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know what it's supposed to be because ain't, this ain't no offensive award now. If you first team, you know, all SEC is offense and defense, not just offense. Let's, 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 let's be, be clear. Let's be clear. You got to take both of them to count. Offense and defense. And we got to, and, and I've been looking at previous awards. They've all first team, second team, and there have been some players who suck defensively, and they were still first team. This ain't no award like that. Cause and then we're gonna talk about this all American mess that I know gonna be jacked up because they don't look at defense whatsoever. They don't look at defense whatsoever, and you know why? Because defense don't get ratings on television. It don't get uh, uh, stoppages of play while I'm watching my game, Cox, and they cutting in because something else going on. I don't care about that. You know what defense? You when when teams don't play defense, you know what that happens? You know what happens? They don't get no championships. They don't get no championships. They score a whole bunch of points. Don't get no championships. So, I, you know, with Carolina, we just got to beat up everybody. We just got to beat up everybody, beat up everybody like they stole something and just continue to do that way. And then eventually we'll get the commercials. Eventually we'll get the NIL deals. Eventually we'll get this and get that. Because because right now, and women's college basketball is exploding. It's exploding, it's exploding. It's doing some great stuff. You know what I'm saying? But also... Remember, this is team stuff now. And South Carolina is the prettiest basketball team going today while also having a whole bunch of future WNBA players. Don't, don't lose sight of that. Mm -mm. Um, Darnell Baylor. Everyone played well. Tesla is getting hot at the right time. Watkins will be the all SEC first team next year. She's building confidence each and every time she steps on the floor. I love full wide. Bro, I can't agree with you anymore. That is awesome. Thank you for the comment, fam. You always comment, and I appreciate you. And Tessa went off. Tessa went off. And, and enough is not say, talked about with Tessa Johnson. You know, we we she is special. And her three, three, uh, her three ball is un unbelievable. That rainbow three is is special. It's special. Antonio, Splash Sisters was on display. They were. 
They were. And, and, and you know, because last night it was it was Tessa. Sunday, I'm going to let you know right now. I'm going to let y'all know right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give y'all a peek under the curtain. Uh, Tina Papa going off on Sunday. Tina Papa is going off on, t- on Sunday. Yeah, she is. I'm late. Get your tickets ready. Get your popcorn early. Tina Pow Pow is going to light up Tennessee on senior day. Will she come back again next year? I don't know. I do know that on Sunday, she's going to light up Tennessee just in case. Just in case. She's going to light them up and all her family going to be there. It's going to be awesome to see. That is that is the secret right there. That's a secret. Is that a secret? It may not be a secret. But you had Tessa go off last night. Tina Pow Pow is going off on Sunday. And I tell you this right here, Tina. I tell you this right here, Tina. You need to let them know who's the best shooter in the country. You need to let them know who the best shooter in the country. Because there's a whole lot of folks out there saying somebody else is the best shooter in the country. I ain't going to say her name. But you know where I'm going with this. Tahina Pow Pow is shooting the rock at 49% from three-point line. Tina Pow Pow playing for the number one basketball team in across the world is the best shooter in college basketball. It ain't close. We shouldn't have a conversation. But the only thing these folks see is volume. Oh, Tina Pow Pow ain't gonna shoot no 15, 16, 17, 18 three pointers in no damn basketball game. She ain't gonna never gonna do no mess like that. She's never gonna do that. Never. Because that's not the way Carolina plays. But I tell you this right here. You put Tahina Pow Pow on a such team where she's shooting the rock, shooting a three-point basket 17, 18 times per basketball game like some of these other folks are doing. She would blow those records out the water. She would because she's a better shooter. Tahina Pow Pow is the best three-point shooter in the country. And it's not being said enough. So every time I'm on air, I'm going to say, Tina Pow Pow is the best shooter God has ever created in a Gamecock uniform. That's what she is. It ain't them other ones. It ain't them other ones. Don't forget what you heard and, and listen to your man, Captain Will, right now. She's the best. The best. If there was a contest with Tina Pow Pow in the field, I'm taking Tina Pow Pow every single time. Lights out, pow, pow. That's what she do. That's what she do. Lord, please let her come back next year. Let her come back next year. Because Tina Pow Pow come back to South Carolina next year with this squad we got right now. Ooh. Cancel Christmas. Cancel New Year's Eve. Cancel all the holidays because it's over. It's over. Cancel the season. It is over. There ain't nothing. I don't care if Paige Beckers come back. I don't care if, if, if uh, Cameron Brink come back. I don't care who come back. If Tahina Pow Pow comes back to this squad next year, there is going to be a problem for the other 359 teams across the land. Those are the facts. Those are the facts. That is what it is. Uh, y'all think Ashton will start once the tournament starts? Hmm. That's a good question. No. Man, maybe. I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. Because yesterday, Dom was going to start. Well, you know what? No, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Man, that's tough. Shoot. Get back with me. That's a tough one there, man. Because I don't know. I don't know. Because it's... i tell you this right here. If I... If I was a betting man, which I, you know I am, if I was a betting man, I would start in a tournament. I would probably start Ashland. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be with you. In the tournament, I would start Ashland and... Chloe. 
I mean, and the reason why I'm gonna say Ashley and Chloe, the reason why I say Ashley and Chloe is because of this reason. And I'm already saying that that, that Cardoza is the uh uh, SEC player of the year. I really, I really feel that she had, her numbers are crazy, all these n- different things. But I will say this when Ashlyn and Chloe are playing together, the offense moves smoother because you're not force feeding the ball to Camila Cardoza and you're not getting those uh, turnovers trying to force feed the ball. Now you put, you have, Everybody played the same amount of minutes. I ain't, I ain't thinking about, you know, starting is different than actual minute play. Camila Cardoza still gets her 25, 27 minutes of basketball game. Uh, Ashton Watkins still gets her 21, 22 minutes a game. And, you know, uh, Chloe still gets her 17, 18 minutes a game. So I don't, don't, don't mess those numbers up and have Fagan getting her run too. But 16, 17, 18 minutes a game as well. But I tell you this right here, we need to get off to a, a quicker starts. We need to get off to quicker starts. And a lineup with Ashton Watkins and Chloe Kitts gets us off to a quicker start because I believe that Ashlyn and Camila occupy similar space. I don't real talk. I don't want uh, Ashlyn and Camila playing together. I don't. They're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to do the same thing. Now, Cam- uh, 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 Camila Cardoza is six foot seven and she can get the rock and finish, you know, those things. But I just think they occupy uh, you know similar space. I prefer C- Cardoza playing more so with uh, maybe a Fagan. I prefer that, but you know, those are my thoughts. Let me take a shot on that because I know I'm here some stuff, but that's the way I feel. Cheers. Another shot. Elizabeth Anderson, Tessa Johnson balled out with those three pointers. Yes, she did. She did. Cut your notary. You literally said that Arkansas would shoot twice as many threes as we would, but it would make the same amount of threes. Yes, you can call it again, Cap. Thank you, my sister, because I'm not right all the time. But when I'm right, I'm going to let you know. Because I'll probably be wrong on Sunday. I will. I'll probably be wrong on Sunday. I, I made my prediction on Sunday. Tomorrow. Yeah. Dang. So it was the weekend. Mm. Christopher Jones, Cap, we know ESPN and others are biased. South Carolina, biased South Carolina while they, they'll show lower ranked teams in prime time every week. It really upsets me when that happens. It really does. It really upsets me. And, you know, Sunday we got the 12 o'clock, 10, 12 o'clock game and, you know, playing Tennessee and it's on ESPN. But you know what ain't happening? You know what ain't happening on Sunday? It, game day won't be there. Game day won't be there. How did number one team in the country only get game day one time? And it's against Georgia. How does that happen? Number one team in the country. We only lost one. We've lost one basketball game. We were, what, 36 and 128 and all that? Come on. We've lost one basketball game in two years. Come on. That makes no sense. And, and, you, and this is the reason. This right here is the reason that game day came to Carolina against Georgia. This is the reason. The reason they came against Georgia, because they knew that game day was going to go to Ohio State and, and, and um, Iowa. Aren't they going to be there? Is game, is game day going to be in um, Iowa? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. It just made too much sense. It made too much sense for them not to be. Let me know if I'm wrong or right. Because I don't know right now. Day T, they changed the lineup too late for Sinai to start and got the tech. Yep, they did. They did. They did. They got a two point, <laughs> got a two point cushion. It's so sad. It's so sad. Um, Chuck Baylor, what's up, fam? What is up? Numbers don't lie. Speak on the cap. Thank you for being a member, brother. Robert Minnick, Arkansas head coach, said he knew he couldn't beat South Carolina, and South Carolina has no weaknesses. He believed they are better this year than last year. And he did. He did. And, um, you know, sometimes I get to debate in my mentions and in my comments and the DMs and all these different situations talking about, you know, Carolina and, and comparing last year's team to this year's team, comparing 2017 uh, team with this year's team and, you know, compare it, uh, you know, the COVID team with this year's team. And my whole my my whole thing has always been the defense is the same. The defense is the same. 
defensive rating, this year's team is actually a little bit better than last year's team. A little bit better. This year's team is better than 2017 team, and this year's defense is better than the COVID team. Now, I'm going to hear some, so some folks say, oh, Cat, we ain't got no um, lockdown defenders on this basketball team. Well, I'll tell you this right here. If Ashton Watkins is not a lockdown defender, I don't know who is in this era of basketball. She's legit. She's the best. Ashton Watkins is the best defender in the country. She's the best defender in the country. Just watch. You just watch one side of the ball. Rewatch games. Go on ESPN Plus. Rewatch games the Carolina plays and just watch the defensive side of the ball. Don't watch the offensive side of the ball. Just watch the defensive side of the ball against some teams. And you'll see how good of a defender Watkins really is. She's so special. Nolan, thank you for being a member. And thank you for commenting a lot. Appreciate you, brother. Shout out to Adele for being South Carolina student athlete in the month of February. Been on campus for 50 days and already shining. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Adele just, yeah. Adele been on campus. You're right, 50 days. And already an SEC champion. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so crazy. Already an SEC champion. Rings on top of rings. She got that one in the regular season. She gonna most likely she's gonna get SEC. Now, what if this girl gets a uh a, a national championship ring and ain't played a lick, recovering from an injury? It's only gonna get better for Adele Ty. And you know, I feel I feel the pain. I feel the pain for Adele. I feel the pain for Maddie McDaniel. I feel the pain for both of them. Maddie, for the ones who don't know Maddie McDaniel, gonna be out for six to nine months after tearing. Having a meniscus tear, some say ACL tear, meniscus tear. Regardless of the fact, she's out for six to nine months. And then you got rehab. It's a lot of different things. And, and Maddie McDaniel, who I, who I talked about a lot because of how special she is as a basketball player and how special she's going to eventually be for South Carolina. But Maddie tore her ACL. I want to say it was in 2021. She tore ACL in 2021, I believe. Um, but came back and obviously the 12th ranked player in the country. McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand, you know, All-American. You know, injuries happen. Injuries happen. And it doesn't stop players. It doesn't stop players. Raven Johnson. Tore ACL, what, two, three games into her, her freshman season? Had to rest her, had to get an injury. Tina Powell, I think she tore ACL twice early in high school. Injuries happened. Atessa broke her broke her leg. I think a sophomore year in, in high school. Injuries happen. Medicine, medicine is so much better now. Recovery is so much better. I remember when I was in high school, when I was in college, when I was early in the army, you, 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 you tear ACL. It's uh, over a year. You, it takes you two years to, for recovery. Two years of recovery. And you still don't come back right. Many times back in the day, ACL would pretty much end your career. Not no more. These girls, unless they tell you that they got injured, you would never know. Who You wouldn't even never know that Raven Johnson, with all her speed and quickness and, and, and torque and all these different things, with, that she tore ACL. You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that at all. Tessa Johnson, who is who playing a low a lot of point forward with the second team now. Something's going on. Don is planning for the future, y'all. Trust and believe. You had Tessa Johnson in the fourth quarter playing point forward. Malaysia Fulwiley playing off guard. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. She is Bree Wayne. Best thing happened to South Carolina was Camila going to Brazil because Watkins really came out of her, her shell. Let them sleep on Malaysia, Kat. You are so right. You are so right. She Ashton Watkins took advantage of that situation and ran with it, took that baton and was gone. She was gone. And, and let them know who she is. And it, the hardest part now is trying to keep her out of the lineup. We having a question mark about saying, should she start? She should not start. All these different things. All these different things. And, and, and now, it's just, it's just I, I don't know. I don't, is that... You just love it. You just love it. And in terms of Malaysia for a while, they can keep sleeping on it at all. Because the only thing I, I never hear people talk about, I'm talking about the national media talking about our defense. 
Never hear them talking about that. The girl plays really good defense. Really good defense. Her defense are rating in the low 70s. In the low 70s. And I know some folks who are new to defensive rating, offensive rating, because I talk about it a lot because I'm an analytics type dude. I have to tell you, those numbers are good. Because I have to teach folks. I have to teach folks because because the media don't talk about this stuff. And I ain't a part. I guess I am part of the media now. I guess I am. But I'm going to tell you, well, every time we in Cam Will, you turn to Cam Will, you're going to get some facts and you're going to get some real deal stuff. And I'm going to talk about offense and I'm going to talk about defense because apparently defense don't matter in basketball no more. Since they came with their turn two we two way player, defense don't matter. To be a really good basketball player, you had to play offense and defense. That's the criteria. That's the criteria for me. In order to be a really good basketball player, you have to play offense and defense. That is my my mantra. That is my 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 uh, legacy. No, nah, ain't my legacy. That is the way I was brought up watching basketball. Michael Jordan was my dude. Michael Jordan is my guy. 1988, he won Defensive Player of the Year as a guard, also led the league in scoring, and won the MVP. That's Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul, was great offensively and defensively. That is, that is how, that is my standard bearer. Who plays great on both sides of the court? Because you have talented players can always play great on one side of the court. You can do that. You can do that. But I want the offensive player who can score on the other end or can do the assists or you know, whatever the case to be, being an all-around player on the offensive side, but also go on defense and guard their best player. That's what I want. So I want the challenge, right? So what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing in college basketball for the ladies, I don't watch the men that much. I'm just keeping it real. I watch the ladies game. So what I'm seeing now, is the players that the national media talk about every single day are players who are one-dimensional and just play offense. That's what I'm seeing. And I don't like that metric. I don't like that metric where the only thing you talk about is a player who's shooting 30 times a basketball game but not playing defense. I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that. I think there should be more effort talked about a all-around player who also works on defense, not because my son and I, my youngest son and I get into these debates about offense and defense. We always get into these debates about offense and defense and about LeBron and about Michael. And I always tell, I, I've told him since he was, he's, he's young, he's 21. So, you know, he's in that era of the LeBron era and everything. And I tell him, I said, first of all, of the two of us who watched both players, and you can say, well, I seen LeBron when he was you know, on YouTube. I say, first of all, you were born 2002. LeBron came into the league in 2003. And I know good and damn well you weren't watching basketball then. You know, so, so. The eyes that I saw, that I was nine years old when Jordan came into the league and the eyes that I saw LeBron, LeBron guards the third or fourth best offensive player on defense. And then we're seeing some of the same stuff in, 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 in women's college basketball where you have a great, talented offensive player who was, who is guarding a space, uh, guarding a, uh, 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 the fourth or fifth best player offensively on the team because I can take a rest, you know? I don't like that. I like our girls who defend on the other end. You talking about Breezy who defending, Raven who defending, Cardosa, Watkins, Malaysia. I mean, everybody. Everybody defends on this Carolina team. Everybody. Shoot, Sakima herself, eight minutes a game, is defending, doing everything she can do. Her six foot five self, doing to put in work. Everybody defends. Sanaya Fagan didn't get no burn jam the freshman year or the sophomore year, and early on in her senior junior year, because she wasn't defending. Well, I tell you this right here, Sanaya Fagan is defending now. She is defending now, and it's so and she she's defending hard on defense and is also making the offensive game even more dynamic. Because she's giving them work. Tanaya Fagan is a grown-ass woman, y'all. She is a grown woman. And she letting me know that she is. I love her game. I love her game. Claire Fennell, love me some Raven. We need her if we want to win the ship. Yep, yep, yep. Show do. Show do. Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson has seven. Let me, let me say this right here. Raven Johnson had seven assists last night. Seven assists in 25 minutes of ball. 
seven assists in 25 minutes of basketball, one turnover, seven to one. This, my peoples, that we talk about quintessential point guards. I want my point guard to do this. I want my point guard to do this. I want my point guard to score 25 points, have seven threes and all this stuff. No, no, no. I want my point guard to be Raven Johnson. Will she score a whole lot of points? Nope, she is not going to score a whole lot of points. She ain't. But what she is going to do, Raven Johnson is going to get assists. She has seven of them. She has six rebounds. She had, what, what four points? And she had one turnover. One. You got a whole lot of so-called great point guards in this country who are leading the league in turnovers. What? And I don't give a damn if they're talking about her, her usage rate is 45. Pass the ball. Raven Johnson has seven assists, three steals, and one turnover. That is, ladies and gentlemen, being a point guard. And also, and also being the best perimeter defender in the SEC. Her perimeter defense is 72.2. The best in the conference. Not Flage. Raven Johnson. Put some respect on that girl's name. Put some respect on Raven Johnson. Then improve shooting. Then improve shooting. Field goal percentage up. Three-point percentage up. Rebounds up. Assists up. All her numbers are up. Everything is up. And she's a dog on defense. Every single game. Country notary. My neighbor's... <laughs> My neighbors think he still has those players he had from a few years ago who could actually shoot LOL. Ashley would dominate in March and April. You're right. You're so right. Now, this is a different Arkansas team. And in, in your system, your system has to change a little bit with the players. If you ain't been recruiting well, if a girl ain't a great three-pointer, don't have a shoot no 12, 13 times, no three-pointers. You just giving opportunities for the other team to get rebounds and score. And that, 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 no, my name is a great coach. I, I, that's what they tell me. He's a great coach. But come on. I mean, you had Dada 5 for the 3 for 12, Keats 0 for 5, Spencer 1 for 8. You know, come on now. Poffin Barger 0 for 4, two, uh, Daniels 2 for 7, Lawrence. You know, yeah, I mean, come on. 8, eight, eight for 41 is 8 for 41. You can't put. What's the thing? Lipstick on a pig and make it cute. You can't do that. You can't do that. Mm -mm. And then Watkins is going to put in some work. Mark Watkins is about to put in some work because it's about to count now, y'all. We get through Sunday. Get through Sunday unscathed, be 29 and 0, 16 and 0 in conference. And the magic starts happening. This was the thing on Cribs. This is where the magic happens. MTV Cribs, right? This is where the magic starts happening for South Carolina. This is where we turn up. This is where we focus, and this is when we beat teams down, beat them down into submission. That's what we want. Uh, Shakim, I love Lay with the Butter. She is awesome. Hope she has a great SEC tournament. I think she's gonna have a great SEC tournament. I really do. And I think it's I think like the first because the first couple of games, the first couple of games, first first two rounds in the tournament are going to be at Columbia. Okay, so they're in front of the, our fans. They're in front of our family. They're in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's in williams Bryce. Come on, williams Bryce. That's something about a little bit of football. It's in Colonial Life Arena. It's going to be a show. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be something. So it's going to be a show for uh, for Wiley, too, before we go off and go into the road in, in Albany, you know, and, 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 and then, you know, eventually Cleveland. But the SEC tournament is first. And that's in Greenville. And regardless of what LSU do, you know, trying to get tickets and complaining about South Carolina getting all the tickets, well, sorry for your loss. Just take this butt whipping, you know, and keep on moving, get ready for the tournament. Teron, this season, Watkins is going from good to great throughout the season. It's hard to imagine the scene. You are, you, bro, you're so right. It, it, it is tough. It is tough to see how good this girl is going to be. It's it's really tough to see how good she's gonna be. We've seen her through the book through through the season just get better and better and better to literally last night doing what she wanted to do with the basketball, getting to the rim effortlessly, uh drop uh doing that floater, 
I can jump higher than you. You can't block the shot. I mean, oh my God. While also defending. And she's a sophomore. Sophomore. Ernest Boy, Raven is, is a true point guard. She does a great job of leading South Carolina. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. So special. And y'all know Raven's my favorite player. She's my favorite player. But Raven's my favorite player, and, and Tiana, Tina is my second favorite. Chloe's my third. I mean, so many. Malaysia full. Everybody my favorite player. I shouldn't even say that stuff no more. Everybody my favorite player. Everybody my favorite. This team is so awesome, man. Awesome. Raven's my favorite player because she's the first person I actually had an interview when I started this job. Is it a job? I don't think it's a job. Only job I had was Army. So I started this fun. She was the first person I interviewed. So that's why she's my favorite player, if you didn't know. Um, high vibrations. Lay's lockdown defense leads to a lot of her points. She does. She does. Watch watch Lay's defense. Watch her defense. She's not. She moves her feet. She's so quick. She anticipates. That's why she gets all of that steals. That's why she had four steals last night. Uh... Um, Lay should be SEC freshman of the year. I agree with you. I agree with you completely that she should. Now, I can also see the media voting for Michaela Williams because um, she was the uh, when the season started, she was the darling of LSU. She was number one recruit, you know. But um, Full Wild has had a better year, and she's a better defensive player offensively. And his apples and oranges defensively, she's a much better player, much better player defensively. Derek Smalley, what's up? My God, thank you for being a member. Say it once. Cardoza started slow. I guess she needs to get the rust off. But if she not a double double every uh every game, it'll be tough to win in the uh chip. Um, ooh, you're making me think, brother. You're making me think. Because you make me think, and the reason it's making me think because we're not dependent on Cardoza for our team to do well. We're not dependent on her. We ain't dependent on real talk. We ain't dependent on any player on this team to do well. I think we can miss any player on this basketball team and still be do well because of the, the, the depth of our team, you know. And I love Cardoza. I love Cardoza. I wish she would come back another year. I wish I wish everybody would come back another year. I mean, you milk this thing as long as you can. Milk as long as you can. Just for me. Just for me, Captain Will. Just for me. Just me. Michelle J, thanks, sister. Happy Friday, GTL family. Cheers. You got it. Michelle Malone, I love my T-shirt. Great quality. Very soft, stretchy. Great fit for the fluffy people. <laughs> Girl, you funny. Michelle Malone, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's a dope shirt. It's a dope shirt. Came up with the design and um, came up with the design and wanted to uh, do something different. So I put the, you know, the female, in my, in my mind, the female Jordan symbol and, um, you know, basketball, 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 kind of like a trend towards the um, WNBA. And, and the orange, and then of course I got my name on it. Game got talk with Cam Will. Everything is an advertisement now. Come on, man. that's what goes down. But I thank you, Urban Patch. Any word on Shania Ja? She must not be coming back before the season ends. I, you know, like I said before, I, I I saw her, you know, practicing, you know, with the highlighters. But I had, you know, more to follow, more to follow on that one. Dexter. AKA a lonely soldier. Chloe would probably enter the portal. Why? Why would Chloe enter the portal? The girls balled out. We I think we need to stop this narrative in, in terms of like uh because a player isn't playing 25, 30 minutes in a basketball game that a player is going to transfer out. And here's and this is a cool thing too. Think about this right here. Chloe and Joyce are besties. Think about that. Do you think that Chloe has some influence on Joyce Edwards signing with South Carolina? You remember they played together Team USA this summer? Chloe was the only player 
only player on this team that went to Joyce Edwards' announcement. She was the only one. You don't think they real tight? You don't think they real tight? Chloe should be the SEC most improved player this year. Chloe just got on campus a year and two months ago. And she's averaging 10.7 rebounds in about 18 minutes of play. She's only getting better. And she started most of the games this year. The ascension of Chloe Kitts and, and, um, and Ashton Watkins on this basketball team has been straight up crazy. It's been crazy. And more so with Chloe because she ain't been on campus as long. She ain't been on campus as long. Watkins came on campus six months before Chloe did. Think about that. Six months before Chloe did, Watkins was there. Watkins was, a, if I recall correctly, the 12th ranked player in the 2022 class. Chloe was a 17th ranked player in the 2023 class and arrived on campus early. Early. Graduated early and showed up. So her ascension, in my eyes, is even greater than Ashlyn Watkins' ascension. Because Ashlyn Watkins arrived on campus summer of 2022. Summer 2022. Chloe arrived on campus January 2023. That is crazy. So real talk, when Chloe gets to, when the season starts this fall, she's basically where uh, uh, in her sophomore year, really. She's really starting her sophomore year in basketball. Even though we're saying this is a sophomore year now, in her sophomore year, in a so and she and she in her, she's not in her sophomore year academically. Why we're we gonna say it's a sophomore year, you know, athletically? I don't want to do the math. I don't know how how it works, but in my mind, if she got four full years to play, she should have four full years to play, not three and a half. So in my mind. I could be all wrong. I could be all wrong, but I see, you know, Chloe. It might, it might sound wrong that she should, she should lose uh, eligibility January 2027. That's probably wrong, but that's the way I feel. That's probably. I mean, I don't know how it work. I don't know how it work. Somebody, somebody school me on that. Somebody in the, uh, in the uh, office of South Carolina, square me away on that. Square me on that. Uh, Chloe's going to where she's happy where she is. Roy Jackson, the last championship team had 10 McDonald's all Americans on that team. Captain. Let's see. Let's see how many a team had. Let's see. Let's see. I like challenges. It's so awesome. I love challenges. Let's see. I want to see it. Let's see. So Zaya Cook was. Camilla, uh, Leah Boston was. That's two. Cardoza was. Ami here was. Bree was. Bree Hall was. So one, two, three, four, five. Bree Hall, six. Watkins was. a seven. Raven was. That's eight. Uh, Fagan, that's nine. Oh, you're right. You're right. Cooper. That's 10. And you can, you can even throw Chloe in there. She wasn't McDonald's All-American. She wasn't McDonald's All-American. That would be 11. You're absolutely right. I stand corrected. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Appreciate you, fam. Appreciate you, uh, Ray Jackson. What happens next? Do you think Don would change what's working? I hope not. Thank you for being a member, too. I hope not. Don't change what's going down. Don't change what's going down because everything is working. I don't, I, I know. Don't, but I, and Don, I trust. Facts and facts. Facts on top of facts. I trust that, you know. Um, you know, so whatever Don Staley feels is best for her basketball team because she's with the basketball team more than anybody. So I just, uh, 
Yeah. Antonio, Cap, the lineup has to be the way it is because that's how we control and determine the style of play. I like your comment. Natural girl, keep our starting five. A quicker start means getting pow, pow, going early, then get the girls down low fed. I like that as well. I like that as well, natural girl. Thank you for the comment. Chris Gray, Cardoza needs a fire lit under her early in games to be real. Unfortunately, you might be right. You might be right. Uh, Elizabeth Allison, Cardoza is a great player. She may not play aggressively, but she gets the job done. So, so, so right. So, so right. Um, Parker Hunter cannot figure out how to join your membership levels. Hey, somebody, um, 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 um Michelle J or Michelle Malone, one of y'all two, my two Michelles, y'all, um, square away, um, uh, Parker, Parking Hunter on how to get to the membership stuff, um, in the, in the chat. Make sure that if y'all, y'all do me a favor and make sure that, uh, you squared away. Adam Ritter, we may need to get another transfer point guard with Maddie Hurt. You know, I was thinking about that. I was, I, I was really thinking about that. I was thinking about that, but because it really hurt me. Because I interviewed Maddie last, I was the first one to interview Maddie after she committed to the Gamecocks. Um, I, I was really thinking about that, but I'm going to say that I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. I think that uh, Don has some things working out. And we need another transfer. If we have a transfer... Um, the pro Okay, so this is the problem. This is the problem with this team. Because if we get a transfer, that transfer isn't going to be as good as Matty McDaniel will be. You feel what I'm saying? Maddie's going to be a great player for South Carolina. If she had to take a red shirt year this year, which I think she will, I mean, Maddie was going to be dependent upon anyway this year. That was just a, a extra uh, Lowry's season on the, on the, on the, on the um, chicken. That's all it was. Some, some extra Lowry's on the sprinkle that thing in until the following year when Raven has gone. And, and, you know, but if this is a transfer point guard, it's going to be a, a guard who doesn't doesn't have, in my opinion, I could be wrong. It's going to be a guard who doesn't have uh, much eligibility left. So it might be a transfer senior or junior or something that effect, but to get minutes. Because regardless of the fact, let's say this right here. And if, if Tahina goes to the, to the W, if Tahina goes to the W, you still got Breezy, you still got Malaysia Full Wiley. You still got uh, Tessa Johnson, and you, you you know, so that you got some talented, talented golf, you know. But I really, I think, I think uh, we we, I would say this right, it's a possibility. I say it's a possibility that we could get a, a transfer guard to help out, to help out, because what you do need, what you do need to continue to have another one, another one in the holster. Just ready to tap in, you know, because right now you got firepower coming off the bench with Tessa and you, with Malaysia. So if Tina goes to the W, you're going to have um, Malaysia moving on into that starting lineup next year. So in the holster, you got Tessa. You're going to need somebody to come off the bench to fill that role. Um, and that player was Maddie to get the point to be next year's version of what Malaysia Full Wally is doing now. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what it was. It was. It was. It was going to be, but now with her being uh, out for the uh, foreseeable future, hopefully it's closer to six months versus nine months. But Adam Ritter, you might have a point, bro. You might have a point. You might have a point for real. Um, but regardless of the fact, we just wish our players well. You know, we wish our players, you know, good health good health and, and continue to, you know, get fixed up, get fixed up because, um, basketball is a physical sport and basketball is the, um, the, the way it's being played now is so freaking fast. Now it's so high pace. 
and injury is going to happen. Country notary, some some of you people think that the definition of a good player is being a ball hog scoring out a point. <laughs> Country notary, you be trolling them. Don knows what she is doing. We are undefeated. I mean, you are you right? I can't say it more than anything. we we are. We play, in my humble opinion, we play the way basketball is supposed to be played. We play the way basketball is supposed to be played. Share the ball. Everybody has a um, bite of the apple. Everybody scores. And you have to do that when you have so many talented players on the basketball team. You have to do it. You have to do it. And people coming to this team knows that they aren't. I mean, Don said it. When I, it was a, it was an interview I saw with, um, I think it was Breezy Hall's parents, if I'm correct. I think it was her uh, her parents, and when she was being recruited by by uh, South Carolina, and basically Don told the way they was reiterating it or telling the story was basically Don said that you you come into you come into South Carolina, you know, if Breezy comes to South Carolina, we have a whole bunch of dogs. That's what you said. We have a whole bunch of dogs, so she's gonna get opportunity to play. But we have a whole bunch of dogs, so that's the that's the interpretation that. The ter- Captain Will's interpretation of what Don Staley said was, "You, your, your child might be great, but we have a whole lot of other great players on this basketball team. You know, so I don't think a whole lot of coaches in the country can st- can sell that. I don't think a whole lot of countries can go into a child's uh, uh, home and 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 they say, okay, we want your we want your daughter to be a part of this p- program." And hoping the and she can be like the the building block, Bert, the first building block towards the championship for us. It's a few teams that can say, "Yo, we got some dogs right here. She's gonna have to compete. She ain't promised no position. This is how we're gonna have to do." And you be talking to McDonald's All Americans. You know what I'm saying? You're ten ranked tenth, fifteenth in the country, and it's number two, number one in the country. The same speech has been said over and over again. You think the same speech wasn't told to Joyce Edwards? Wasn't told to Sarah Strong? Wasn't told to Raven? All these different players who were so great in high school. Everybody on our team were great in high school. Some of them were freak, straight up uh, superstars in high school. But Don said, yo, we got dogs. So when she recruiting Sarah, when she recruiting Joyce, that same message is, is going down. And we were she recruiting Aaliyah Chavez in class of 2025, Jazzy Davidson, you know, who we're going to talk about later. You know, th- yo, we 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 are really, really, really good. You see us on TV every week. You, you, you know we good. But you also got to say, you can't, you, some of these players don't want to deal with that. We want to go to a team where we can score, so I can be the next Juju. I can be the next uh, Hannah Hidalgo, you know, because I'm going to shoot 35 times in a basketball game. But that's not the message for South Carolina. So Country Notary, thank you for saying that. High Vibrations loving how Raven has developed. Ravens is a sophomore, y'all. Ravens is a sophomore. She's gotten better and better at every metric since last year. She's going to get better and better of every metric next year. When she's a junior. You know, Raven will be a red shirt junior next year. Red shirt junior. Okay, so her her Raven potentially, I ain't saying she's going to do it. Raven potentially could have she can play in the tw- class, okay, 24-25 season. She's a red shirt junior. 2025-26 season, she's a red shirt senior. Raven could potentially have two more years here. Yes, she can. Uh, Brando, ESPN really wants... ESPN really wants the South Carolina and Iowa matchup. They put Iowa in our bracket. And, you know, I'm going to talk more about this... Uh, I, you know what? I may as well talk about it tomorrow. Tomorrow sounds like a great day to talk about this latest bracketology that ESPN did. And um, <laughs> I want to say ESPN did it. I want to say ESPN did it because it was the the um, the board, the voting committee, whatever the criteria. What? Well, whoever, whoever came up with this stuff. And you know, obviously, Carolina is the number one. And it makes matchups. It makes matchups, right? <laughs> but I, 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 you know that that caught my eye. That caught my eye. And I don't want to talk about too much if I'm gonna do a show tomorrow about it. But that caught my eye. Yeah, having South Carolina's number one and then Iowa number two. In our, in the same bracket, 
I was like, okay. So they're trying to get that match up. All right, okay. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. If that what you want, you're going to get Iowa out early. Because if you want ratings, this is the thing. If you want ratings for this NCAA tournament, you keep Iowa as far away from South Carolina. Because you want South Carolina in Iowa. It's a storybook ending. It's a storybook ending. I can already see them writing the script now. They get a storybook ending, South Carolina in Iowa, you know, uh, playing in the national championship, Caitlin Clark, you know, going to um, go out as a champion, defeating the number one team who has lost one basketball game in the past two years. And the only game they lost was against Iowa. And, and you know, Raven has been saying this is her revenge tour. And now she gets her chance to go up against Caitlin Clark again in the championship. Tell you this right here. If they put Iowa and South Carolina in the same bracket, you ain't gonna hear no parts of that story because South Carolina is gonna beat the brakes off Iowa. Because Iowa chooses defend, chooses don't they choose not to defend at all. And they South Carolina gonna run them silly. Silly. So keep Iowa away, put them in another region, keep LSU away. Put them in another region because you know you want them in the Final Four. You want South Carolina, LSU, you know, um, Iowa, and you can throw in whatever other team. But you want them three in there some kind of way. And I know it's cool to have a North Carolina State or Stanford or UCLA or Ohio State, any of those teams. But I tell you this right here, ESPN is hoping that Iowa beats Ohio State on Sunday. ESPN don't want to give no Iowa State no number one seed. They want to give Iowa that number one seed. They don't want that. They hoping Iowa, and the games at Iowa, they are hoping that Iowa wins that basketball game. But if Ohio State beats Iowa on Sunday, which they very very well can, because I think that they are a better basketball team than Iowa, Iowa might go down to the number three seed. They should go to a three seed if they lose against Ohio State. If they get beat handily at home against Ohio State, they damn sure should. Damn sure should. That's a whole lot of country right there. You know, sometimes the country comes out more with me. It does. It does. Hey, they, they, they will move out. You, you show right. Let them know why she's Hollywood. She is. Raven is your favorite player because you got to call her Hollywood a press conference. <laughs> Boy, Bray Dre. Appreciate you being a... <laughs> Yo, Brain Dre, thank you for being a member. First off, let me say that right there. And you know what? This is the thing, right? Because, and I got to do a shout out to uh, the USC um, Press Communications. I really do. I got to do a shout shout out because um, they they um, their press uh, the communications director gave me the opportunity to get press passes this season when she had no reason to give it to me. And I've been trying for two years and she, and I was lucky enough to get press passes and stuff and be in the media room and, and all that stuff. It was really cool. And, and you know, now that we got a relationship, I look forward to doing the same thing next year, you know, but you know, first <laughs> when I got up in there, I was like, Woo, they let me up in this please. Woo. Ooh, be careful what you ask for. Let me up in there, right? So, yeah. So you know, all the rest of the, the rest of the cats are, are are paid. You know, to be they, they went to school to you know journalism and all this different stuff. So they are buttoned up reporters and all that stuff, man. And I ain't. I never will be. I never. I don't want to be. That ain't what I want to be. I was a soldier for twenty two years. You count the reserve is twenty five years. My adult life, I've been a soldier. Okay? So that's what I know how to do. I was a soldier who also loved sports and loved to talk. So now I'm doing that now. But you let me in that bird, and I did call it Hollywood. I sure did. I definitely called it Hollywood. And people look at me like, who? who First off, they look at me like, who is this dude? And how he get up in here? And second, like, how you just call it Hollywood? Just like y'all know each other like that. Cause that's what I do. She family. She family. And if you family, that's how we talk. That's how we talk in the country. That's how we talk. And she country. She from Atlanta. She country. I'm country. That's how we talk. 
So yeah, I'm Hollywood. That's what they call them. If your name is Hollywood, your name is Hollywood. I'm going to call you Hollywood. Now it's Crockpot. I see Raven at the game on Sunday. I'm going to call her Crockpot. That's what I'm going to call her. I got some people in my family called Peanut. No, no. I got so many people in my family that, you know, got, got names I can't even say on the air. But that's how we do. So Hollywood, you let me up in the press. Because I still ain't talked to Don in the press conference. They kept moving the mic from me. They kept taking, no, I ain't, I ain't even talked to Don. Because I sure was going to bring up that whole Martin situation. I sure was. And it's, it, time will come. Because Don ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere either. James Jones, great take, Captain Wood. You're 100% right. Pow, pow comes back. The game cost margin victory undefeated season next year will be around 25 to 35 points per game all year. Pow, pow comes back. It's a wrap. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. It's a wrap. It's over. It is over. Carolina got the uh, scrimmage some um, WNBA teams. Pow, pow, come back next year. You need, you need scrimmage some WNBA teams. Because um, ain't nobody in, in, in college basketball going to beat Carolina next year. Well, hell, ain't nobody beat Carolina this year. And this year's team, everybody come back. If Camilla goes to the W, everybody else come back. And Joyce Edwards, and Lord only knows, if Sarah Strong comes to this team, which I highly think is going to happen, that we are going to get the services of Sarah Strong, that she's going to announce it at the McDonald's All-American game, it's done. It might be done for the next three, four years. It's done. What if we go undefeated this year? If we go undefeated this year, win the chip, then next season, 2024, 2025 season, although Adele Tack coming off injury, Matt Abbey Daniel coming off injury, neither one of those players will be counting on to play a lot, to play a lot anyway this year anyway, coming up. You know, the freshmen don't play a whole lot with exception. Well, I can't say Malaysia full while they're playing, you know, several a uh, good amount of minutes and tests as well, you know. But if Tina Popow comes back next year, Everybody else is, is, is great and going to get better, okay? So I don't see us losing no game next year. And you have Joyce. Possibly Saturday. I don't see us losing a basketball game next year. I don't know. who. I, I have no idea who we'll be playing. I have no idea who we'll be playing. But I don't see us losing no game. And then you fast forward to the next year. Who we? What if we got a Leah Chavez in class 2025? The number one point guard in that class. The number one player in that class. Coming to South Carolina. We get a point guard every year. So you're going to have a Leah Chavez, you know, class of 2025, and then you're going to have a, uh, 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 Joyce Edwards was a sophomore, Tyra Strong was a sophomore, uh, Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson can still be on the team. Red jo Raven Johnson could literally be a red shirt senior on this basketball team in two years. Woo! Malaysia Full Wiley, a junior. Uh, Ashton Watkins, a senior. Oh, Oh my Lord. Ashley Watkins, a senior. Chloe Kitts, a senior. Tessa, a junior. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting hot. I'm getting hot in this room. I'm just getting hot in this room. Mm. Just thinking about it. Hey, goody, we need to keep fresh legs in and constant rotation due to depth. Bench is giving much more production than the last season, particularly in the scoring. I can't see I can't see USC not winning all this year. Uh, yeah, it's really. Uh, thank you for the comment. I, I, you, you, we, we are trying to find ways for us to lose a basketball game. We're we are tr literally trying to find ways to lose a basketball game. I don't see. I don't see. We just gotta play bad. We gotta play. We gotta play. Not you. you we cannot for us to lose. We gotta beat ourselves. That that is it right there. We have to beat ourselves. Can another team gonna beat us? We have to play bad basketball. If we ain't gotta play bad basketball, we gotta play below average basketball. In order for us to lose, because too much talent, and we got some other talented teams in, in in this country. We do, we do, but Carolina play B plus A, B plus to A level basketball. Ain't no team beating us. Nope, nope, not at all. Urban Pageant. I heard Agent Wilson and the Aces come into uh, Colonial Life Arena in May. Have anyone heard that? Yep, yep. May the eleventh. They will be there. And it's scrimmaging the Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican national team. May the 11th, Colonial Life Arena is going to be lit. And tickets on sale right now. So you can get those tickets. Darwin E, Chloe ain't going nowhere. My wife's little cousin, she's the <laughs> she's the black cheerleader, the black cheerleader for varsity. Chloe's seen talking to during the shoot around. 
It's funny when you say the black team, the black cheerleader for the varsity team are very, very tight. I haven't heard anything otherwise. Chloe ain't going nowhere, fam. I saw a real cool interview with Chloe's parents and her decision. Because Chloe could have went anywhere in the country. Chloe had a ton, ton of scholarship offers, ton of scholarship offers. And she could have went anyway, anywhere, anywhere in the league. Anywhere in the uh, country. And she decided to come to South Carolina. And South Carolina became late into the process on Chloe Kitts. And the way I, if I remember this correctly, I don't want to misremember it. I don't even know that's the word. Misremember. I think that whole thing with Jose Canseco, when he was on trial, it said some mess like that. So I don't want to do that. But if I remember correctly, um, say when Don, uh, it was an AAU game of some sort, and when Don arrived at the AAU game, Chloe started doing things on the court that she never did before, and she was so hyped that Don Staley was there. This is the thing Don Staley walks into your arena, your gym, wherever the case may be. You, because it's Don Staley, you automatically get hyped. You get mad, you, the, the resume speaks for itself, the person speaks for itself. She's a presence on social media. She is an icon in women's sports, both as a player and as a coach. Okay. So you automatically get hyped. Nah, she ain't going nowhere. There's no reason to. Where would she go? I don't even know. Sneakerhead, Cam Will, in the offseason, should you, you should interview players like live on your stream. I that is the goal because I'm going to be doing content. And I appreciate the um the comment. That is the goal because once the uh season ends in April. I'm be searching for comments. So, I mean, for content. So I will, um, that I would definitely, definitely, um, play, uh, look into that. Definitely will. So more to come for that. Uh, South Carolina bread, gullet accent. You said Sarah strong doesn't play in a church league. They are ranked twins in the ESPN top 20 and play best competition. Where's Joyce Edwards team ranked. Uh, they're not, in, uh, Cam is not ranked in the top 25. Uh, in the country, she's not in top twenty-five in the country, but um, they are. Uh, can't, her high school is playing for the state championship on tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, playing for the state championship tomorrow. Um, they played in the lower state championship a couple of days ago, about three days ago. I think she had like thirty-some points and seventeen rebounds and eight assists, a whole bunch of crazy, unbelievable stats. You know, so. I mean, you know, because the top, the top twenty-five girls basketball teams in the country. You know, you have Sarah Strong with Grace Christian, which is fourteenth or fifteenth. They just won the state championship, and then you had uh, Maddie's team, Bishop McAmara up in PG County. I want to say it was number ninth in the country. You know, it's some quality basketball, quality basketball, but it's also quality. You got to have quality uh, competition, you know, as well. Michael Orsini. Michael Orsini, and we're going to finish up with Michael Orsini. Captain, my captain, is strong, really that good. When I watch the video, she looks slow. She's always playing against smaller players. She plays with Christian school in a private league. Am I wrong? Yeah, fam, you're wrong, man. She is really that good. She's really that good. Sour Strong is an excellent, excellent basketball player. Excellent basketball player. Um, she's the number one and number two player in the country for a reason. And when I went to the Under Armour 24 last summer and saw some of the best basketball players in the 24, 25, and 26 class, Sarah Strong, and this is the class, because I gotta I gotta I gotta let you know. This is the class Sarah Strong was at this at this Under Armour Elite. Sarah Strong was there. Okay. Um Joyce Ed was there. It was going to head up a lot, right? I saw that for a lot. Jelani Cambridge was there. Man, hell, let me look at the um, ESPN 2023. I can tell you exactly who was there without missing anybody. So, class of 23. No, 24. I'm sorry. Class of 24. So, you had these are the players I saw. I saw Sarah Strong. I saw Joyce Edwards. So I'm going number one, number one, Sarah Strong right now, according to ESPN. I saw her. Joyce Edwards, number two, saw her. Jelani Cambridge, number three, saw her. 
saw Jordan Lee, saw her, Michaela Blakes, who's number 10, going to Vanderbilt, saw her, saw Mattis, Maddie McDaniel, obviously, saw her. She's ranked number 12. I saw Olivia Olson. She's going to Michigan. Saw her. Zamari Jones, who went to North Carolina State. Saw her. Ariana Robertson, going to Duke. She's 19th. Saw her. Um, I think Keomi McMillan was there. Going to Rutgers. I can't remember. Blanca Thomas. She's ranked number 30th. Going to North Carolina, 6'5", post player. Saw her. And that's just the class of 2024. In class of 2025, we just move on for now. And I'm just giving you in context. Jasmine Davidson, she's currently ranked the second ranked player. Um, Sienna Betts, I think Sienna Betts was there. Oh, I'm sorry, Blanca Thomas wasn't there. Sienna Betts was there. Dariana Alexander, you know, uh, guard from um, Ohio, she was there. Zakia Johnson, she was there. She's currently ranked number five. Mia Paldo, who's a really, really nice point guard, five foot five from um jersey she was there she is nice and currently ranked number seven and i'm saying this right here i'm saying all this to say this um though i mean those players you're talking about the best players the best players that you know 24 25 and 26 class has to offer sarah strong joyce edwards were the two best players there they were the two best players there it wasn't it wasn't close there was a, it, it has always been and depending on what metric or what organization is talking about it, Sarah Strong, number one, Joyce, number two, Joyce, number one, Sarah Strong, number two. Then there's a gap. There's a gap between two and the, uh, it's really not one and two. I would say one A and one B. And then there's three. Number three is Jelani Cambridge. She's the third best player in this 2024 recruiting class. But there's a, a gap between those players. Sarah Strong, legitimately, whatever team she chooses, that team will immediately be better. She is that good. And in high school, it ain't no difference with Joyce. Well, hell, let me keep it real. Real talk, all these top players, when they're in high school, they look like they're playing against little girls. They do. They do. Because they are. They ain't no different than, you know, than, um, if you're familiar with the guys, you know, uh, it's just like uh, when a, a Kobe Bryant or, or I remember seeing, I'm going to take you back, Kenny Anderson. I think I, I was in high school. When I saw Kenny Anderson from New York City played in the Myrtle Beach Round Ball Classic, I thought he was the best player I've ever seen in my life. You know what I'm saying? Just doing the ball, doing with the ball what he would wanted to do. But or Ray Allen, who was six foot five, playing for Hillcrest Dizel. I remember Ray Allen was was jumping the tip at his high school, and you know what he does with the basketball. You know what I'm saying? So Joyce Elvin, she plays against the state championship. She will be the tallest player in in the game. You know, it, 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 she's six three. Don't, don't, don't believe that she's 6'2". Joyce Edwards is not 6'2". Joyce Edwards is 6'3". Okay? She's 6'3". I'm 6'1 in Jades. And when I took a picture of her a few months, a couple months ago, she was much taller than me. And she had on some doggone slides. Okay? So, I ain't no short brother. So, but back to Sarah Strong. Sarah Strong is legit. If we get Sarah Strong on this team, with, along with Joyce Edwards, on this team, the next four years, I don't see a scenario of us not winning three or more championships. Uh, to go along with the recruits that we have on, already on the squad and to future recruits that's going to be here. Because you legitimately have the best. What, I, let, me, let me stop. Let me stop because I'm getting too hyped. She's legit. She's legit. And, 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 and that is so much. That is so much. Um, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for chiming in on a Friday night. Friday night. I need you to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You are hearing me right now. Go to Apple Podcasts. Follow Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. Go to iHeartRadio. 
follow me. So if you are following me on YouTube, you also need to follow me on these other platforms so we can continue to grow this platform and let folks know that Gamecocks Talk with Captain Real is the best thing going today. This concludes another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. You're now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go.